conversation by asking you a rhetorical question. How stressed have you been in maybe the past week or the past month? I know maybe you students have maybe tests, but I'm sure you have finals, and your parents have to work with juggling kids and your work and all that. Personally, I have lots of experience with stress here as a student. I've had to prepare for many assignments and tests that maybe I wasn't ready for, and I've spent many nights. And due to this, I've decided to do a bit of research. I found a magazine. This magazine is called The Science of Stress, co-authored by Rick Borrell. In this, Rick Borrell says that there are two general types of stress. There is acute stress, which is late night studying, or a presentation you have to give. Or maybe it's that conference that you just don't know what to say. It's generally high levels of stress and can be things like the butterflies in your stomach and all that stuff. But then there's another type of stress called chronic stress. Chronic stress tends to be more long term and it can be things like the daily commute or work or maybe you have taxes or student loan, bad things like that. And chronic stress tends to have much more dangerous side effects. Chronic stress can increase the risk of heart disease, cancer, and Crohn's disease. And it can wear down your joints and make your muscles weaker. And there are a few common hurdles in the way of getting past your stress, such as maybe you just want to relax, but you have responsibilities. Like, you know, you can't ignore your child in the other room who's crying. Or maybe you have a test and you just want to put it off. And that's called procrastination, and that's bad. Or maybe you have too much work. Maybe you decided, OK, I can take this on. And then you realize you can't take it on, but it's too late. And that can lead to lots and lots of stress. But there, I found some ways to overcome some of these hurdles. For example, when I'm working, to not get frustrated, I take breaks. Usually, I want these breaks to only last five to 10 minutes. And if I can't do it, I get somebody else to help me. And I like to do, maybe, if I have an assignment due next week, I'll start off a bit today, then a bit the next day. And then it will be done, or nearly done, by the time the deadline comes around. And I can finish it all later. So the little things like that build up. And I constantly remind myself about my homework. Like, if I don't have homework, then I'm like, OK, but I got to check. And sometimes, if I don't do it, my parents do it for me. But everybody has different w ways of getting over their stress. And Claire Carter, writer at Carnegie um, Communications and the uh, author of the College Express magazine, says, students often decide to do something called cramming. That's where they have a test the night before, and they study everything that night. Now, not only is this physically and mentally draining, it also doesn't help you remember anything, so it's just worse for you. And it can be incredibly stressful. And, she says, never skip sleep. No matter how many assignments you have the next day, or how long you put something up, and you're like, I'll get it all done tonight, you don't skip sleep. Because if you do, it will get worse and worse from there, because you might forget something else because of lack of sleep. My mentor, Ms. Hofer, is a teacher and a parent, and both are extremely stressful. She has often had a bad day at work, and then she's had to come home to children who might have a bad day also, and she has to deal with that. And to deal with that, she likes to get herself into a good story. Maybe she'll read a book or watch a movie, and she says it helps. Even if she doesn't have enough time, it helps. Now, I'm not saying just put everything off so you can make time for your loan or your outing. Just when you have free time, do something that makes you relax, and then you'll come back to the next thing even better. Her advice to somebody who may be struggling is find something that works for you and stick with it. Maybe 
if you haven't had enough time, free up some time on the weekend and go out and try something fun. Or, or maybe if you're like at work and you overhear someone saying, oh, I'm so happy with this little thing that I do. And you're like, okay, I want to try that. And you just want to fit in and you decide, okay, this is fine for me. Don't do that. Because it might actually not be fine for you. You don't actually know until you listen to yourself, not your, the people around you. And also keep track of the things you've done. If something isn't working for you and you decide, okay, I'm not going to do it, you don't want to come back 10 minutes later and say, have I tried this yet? You want to go back and look at it and say, oh, wait, I've tried this. Okay, time to try something new. Stress can be compared to a river. It's, it, if you're not looking for it, it can appear very suddenly and take you by surprise. It's hard to get over, and like a river is never truly gone, it just trickles down to a little moist riverbed, stress is never truly gone, and you don't want it to be gone, because that's bad for you. But what I'm comparing stress to is the obstacle on the road to success. So are you going to let a successful life stay on the other side of stress, or are you going to get over it and find a more successful life? by getting past your stress. Thank you.